What's going on everyone, it's Jake Yale here, back again, and today we are here with my BPL predictions for, well, the following season. And, um, yeah, please don't give any hate, this is just my opinion, so if you think someone should be higher or lower than they are, please don't hate, this is, remember, this is just my opinion, I know you're open to your different opinion, and yeah, let's go. Explain it, yeah, that works, great. Right, eventually we got on. So, sadly, this year, finishing bottom of the Premier League, I think are going to be Middlesbrough, the newly promoted club. Going to go straight back down again. They're on the right side. They've got some more right players. Karank Ator Karanka is a good manager. They'll probably stick with him for most of the season. But their squad doesn't really have enough BPL experience. They've only got Gaston Ramirez and Legredo, who ain't that good. Don't have much BPL experience. This is why I think they're going to finish bottom. In the 19th position, I am go I'm going to have Watford. Although they had a pretty decent season last year, they sat Sanchez Flores, which I don't think they should have done. They had a solid season surviving relegation. Whether this time under Walter Mazzari, I don't think they're going to do as well. They've got s they've made some all right signings. Isaac's success is pretty good, but just didn't see them getting relegated. And in the 18th position, I have West Bromwich Albion. Tony Pulis, don't think he's going to get it done this year for them. West Brom have a pretty poor side. They haven't made any real big signings. Matt Phillips from QPR wasn't that good of a signing. I can see West Brom going down this year. Sorry, West Brom fans. In the 17th position, I reckon it's going to be AFC Bournemouth. They've got a good, they've got a right side, a very good upcoming side, and Eddie Howe is a, a great potential manager. However, I don't think they are going to be in a ma major relegation dogfight. However, I think they'll be somewhere like 15th on the final day of the season. Results ain't going to go their way, and they'll just finish 17th. So, that's what I think. So in the 16th position is another newly promoted club. This time it's Hull City. They're without a manager at the moment and haven't made any really big signings. However, they do have a lot of experience from the Premier League in their side. They do. They've played in it, of course, the season before this. And I reckon they're going to do all right with whoever the manager brings in. So, 16th place for Hull. In the 15th position is the third and final promoted club. It is Burnley. Of course, been a bit up and down in the Premier League over the last couple of years. They, of course, finished bottom last time. But they've kept their faith with Sean Dyche. He's got them straight back up. They've got some good strikers like Andre Gray and Sam Vokes. And... Um, since they've just come back up, they also have the experience of playing in the Premier League. And I think they'll do better this time. In the 14th position, of course. Well, not of course, but in my opinion, will be Sunderland. Well, what I think about Sunderland is they've got only got a 16-man squad, which is really poor. And they're under David Moyes. But I think, I think Moyes, if he brings in the right players, Sunderland can avoid being in a relegation battle and finish lower mid-table this year, hopefully. Now, 13th place is Everton, and I know I'm a bit sour with this one because, of course, Ronald Koeman, the money-grabbing dickhead, left Southampton to join Everton. Absolute knobhead. I don't, however, I still don't think they're good enough to break into the top 10. I know you might say I'm a bit sour on this one because of Koeman moving to Everton. However, I don't think they have the class, really. They don't have the team game, and when Martin Steckenberg is your highest-profile signing of the summer, you know things are probably going wrong. In the 12th position is Swansea City. Now, they were in a bit of a relegation battle for some of the season last year, but when Francesco Goidlin came in, he provided good good football for Swansea, and they did all right. Manchester Skuro, a uh, lower mid-table position. That's where I think they'll finish this season. They've got some good players in their side. And, yeah, that's where it is. In 11th place is Alan Pardew's Crystal Palace, of course, they went on a big FA Cup run to the final last year, but how? But their 2016 form and the last six months was appalling. They had a great start last year in contention for Europa League spot. However, in 2016, they only won one game, and that was against relegated Norwich. So a poor end of the year for Crystal Palace. However, I think they'll, think they'll bounce back up. They should be pretty solid at the back with Steve Mandanda in goal. That's a good signing. James Tompkins at the back is pretty solid as well. And Andros Townsend could do well with them as well. In the 10th position is Stoke City. 
And of course, they did well last year. They were challenging for Europa League. And hopefully they will do that again. But I think they'll finish the lowest of the top half. They have a good sign. Anatovic, Haselu, Peter Crouch retired, unfortunately. Sad face. Anyway, they've brought in Joe Allen. Maybe not the best signing. The signings they made haven't been overly good. They already have a good sign. They haven't let go of any of their high-profile players yet. In ninth is the team I support, Southampton Football Club. And what I, I would be happy with a mid-table finish this year. And this is where I think I'm going to finish. I think we're, I think we're going to finish ninth. Puel isn't quite Koeman. He'll have some time for himself, but he's good at producing young prodigies like Omri, Lacazette, stuff like that. And the signings he made are good, like Redmond and Hoibo. I'm happy with the transfer business we've done with Pierre and McCarthy coming in as well. I think ninth is going to be a good finish for us next season. In eighth position is, of course, the reigning champions, Leicester City. What an amazing s- season they had last year. Have to congratulate them again. But I don't think they have quite a, as good of a season. But they've still finished quite high up the table. They made some good signings. Ahmed Musa, at striker. Now Ria Mahrez, just a couple of hours ago, saying that he's staying. Is always a good sign. Vardy, of course, is pff, amazing. And the signings they made have been generally good value for money as well. So Leicester, not going to be finishing eighth. Seventh now is West Ham United. And of course, they are going to finish in the same spot they did last year. They made good signings with Faguli and Tora. But I still think they lack a really incredible striker, if you know what I mean. They're going to need, maybe that's when they need to improve. But they've made some good signings called Havard Nordvite. And with the new stadium, also is going to help as well. In sixth position will be Arsenal. And I know this is probably a bit controversial or what people are going to say on this, but I don't think ti- Arsenal going to be any threat to the title this year. I think Wenger's time's over. I don't think he's going to produce the quality of football they used to. Their signings have once again been shocking. I don't really rate Granit Xhaka, and most people do. And when you're linked to players like Shadrach and Mustafi and Alexandre Lacazette, and you end up with Rob Holding and a t- Takuma Asano, it's really not good. Fifth position is, of course, last year's title challengers Spurs oh, I don't think they're going to have the same impact as they did last year and they will be in the fifth position of course it's going to be very hard to come wherever this year but I think Spurs haven't had an alright window Wanyama's probably a missing link but they've brought him in and he looks very good so I guess they're going to be fifth fourth position will be Liverpool and under Jurgen Klopp they have played some spectacular football to be honest with the side that he was left from from Rodgers. Klopp has played a good football under a mediocre side. And Liverpool can finally push again to the Champions League and maybe even a title under Klopp with him bringing in the players himself. Like uh, Ragnar Klavan looks pretty good, honestly. Uh, Karius, unfortunately, out for 10 weeks. However, I don't rate two of their major signings, money signings, anyway. Sadio Mane and Jeannie Wijnaldum. They're good players, only on their day, though. They're very inconsistent. They're only turning up about five games a season. So I don't really rate their high-profile signings this summer. In the third position will be Manchester United, who have arguably had a very good transfer window, bringing in players like Zlatan Ibrahimovic up top. That's a, which could be disastrous or very good. Henrik Mkhitaryan on the right. Maybe again Paul Pogba as well and Eric Barley at the back. And under Mourinho, I don't think they're going to be title challengers, but a third-place position... I think it's where Mourinho will get them in their first season. And I think United fans will take that as long as they play a good style of football, unlike under Van Hal. In the second spot is Manchester City under Pep Guardiola. And, well, what can you say? They've got one, probably, the, arguably the best manager in the world at their club. He's plays good style of football. But there's also been questions. Will his ticker tacker style suit the Premier League? He's made a couple of signings, of course, Nolito and Gundogan. But Gundogan's very injury-prone. Nolito's quite old as well. But they've brought in players like Leroy Sane and Gabriel Jesus. However, you wonder, they've spent over £50 or £60 million on those two players. But will they just rot on the bench instead of getting starting contention? Or will they be major flops? And finally, in the first position is Chelsea. Now, I don't think really Chelsea's team is at its best, but Conte, I think, looking at the way his side, his Italy side played in the Euros, it was very good. Italy 
didn't have the best side they've ever had. It was all run 